the gist of the article is talking about cooling simulation, how it can help you do a couple of things. Number one, improve your cooling uniformity, and number two, improve your cooling times, your cycle times. So, um, but it was focused mostly on the cycle time portion of it, making sure that you have enough flow in your cooling lines and using it efficiently. As far as killing your production schedule on your, on, uh, on your molds, uh, cooling simulation done properly by the right people really should not be a time killer. There, there are really two main benefits of cooling analysis. One, I mentioned uh, cooling uniformity. Uh, the other is uh, helping mold, molders uh, know how to plumb the tool properly and uh, how to do it efficiently. Um, if the flow is laminar, it flows in layers and those layers can be a barrier to heat transfer between the water and uh, the, the steel that surrounds it. So if it's laminar, you're again uh, reducing the amount of heat transfer that you get out of the mold. When things become turbulent, those layers kind of break up and it uh, improves the uh, uh, heat transfer from the steel into the water. Um, and the difference between laminar and turbulent can be mean the difference between seven times the amount of heat transfer. Once you get to that turbulent plateau, then uh, additional flow, uh, additional turbulence, if you will, does not make it any more efficient. It, it kind of levels off after that. So the, the key is to get it to turbulent and then kind of stop. Don't go too much farther, you're just wasting water. What have you got to lose? Uh, studies have shown that when you do simulation, you do analysis work, oftentimes when you do, say, 10 analyses, even if you find big savings on just one of them, it often pays for the other nine. Uh, but my experience has been that uh, we, we find it on a lot more than that.